or to what it says. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Winnicani. You who are with us and you who are, are watching us from home. Uh, we have a sunny day and we, we actually are recognizing another Easter Sunday today. It's Pascha over um, up in Canada over for the Greek uh, Orthodox um, denominations. So um, we'll have a little more on that in just a minute. We have, um, as I understand it, uh, we have a fellowship celebration following worship today. Uh, Christina and, and Theo were celebrating Theo's birthday. We're selling, celebrating Kristen's last day of being here in person with us, although Kristen is continuing with us uh, to work from home uh, in Stevens Point. And um, our, our uh, mission, if you recall, is to shine God's light and share God's love, and we hope that all of you here today will feel that as we worship together. Um, are there any, uh, let's see, Betty, you have an announcement. Yes, we, <clears throat> we just want to take a moment this morning to recognize a church employee that most of us never really got to know, um, Kristen Deadwater, who has been our communication and media, media assistant for the past year. Kristen originally graduated from UW-Stevens Point with a degree in psychology, and then decided to go on for an associate degree in digital marketing. And so she's just about ready to finish up that program and uh, look for a permanent full-time job. So as Marilyn said, this is her last Sunday with us um, in worship. And on behalf of the session and the whole congregation, Kristen, I want to say thank you for your dedication to this job. Um, you joined us, as I said, about a year ago. You were working remotely with Pastor Rose. And with her departure, your job became a little bit more challenging as you had to work with multiple pastors to put worship services together. And it's no secret that we've experienced some communication issues and some confusion while we were without a pastor, but you always persevered putting together the weekly bulletin, the bridge, and maintaining our website. And for that, we thank you very much. We wish you the very best in your future endeavors. And as Marilyn already said, following the service, we have a celebration of Kristen's time with us and Theo's 17th birthday. So we hope you'll join us for that. As for the future, um, Jessica Harrison has graciously agreed to be our Sunday morning um, technician back there working uh, and allowing the service to be streamed. And we are still <clears throat> advertising for a part-time office administrator, someone to be on site to take over the other responsibilities. Um, so far, I don't believe we've had any um, inquiries about that, but we uh, continue to pray and keep our fingers crossed that uh, there's someone out there that is interested in the position. So uh, if you know of someone, please have them contact Christina. Thank you. Uh, one other announcement I do have is that we have our pulpit supply all set for the month of May, but I'm in search of liturgists. There's a sign-up sheet down in the entry. Um, if any of you can help us out um, one of the Sundays in May as a liturgist for our pulpit supply, <coughs> it would be much appreciated. Are there any other announcements this morning? <coughs> Millie. Um, I would like to extend a big thank you for the Easter brunch and the beautiful decorations in the fellowship hall. I think the deacons did an outstanding job. It 
was lovely last week, and thank you to the choir as well. Lana. I just want to say that our lilies are not going to last if they're just sitting there. So if anyone would like to take one home after the service, please do so. Kristen, that includes you. If you'd like a lily to take home. All right. <laughs> okay. Lilies are need to find homes. So after worship today, if you'd like one. Anyone else? Announcements? How about prayer concerns this morning? John. John is still quite ill. And Linda. <laughs> She's getting better. Okay. Well, before we begin our worship together, I would like to introduce our guest preacher this morning. Uh, this is Ellen Smith. Ellen is a member of the First Presbyterian in Green Bay, and she serves as the regional liaison for Eastern Europe, for the uh, Central and Eastern Europe, for the PCUSA. That includes Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Poland. Um, she's been doing presentations around the area uh, simply because she's not been able to visit too often with her ministry partners at this time, but she's going to give us some powerful insights about um, the Central Eastern Europe, um, the situation there and the people there, and, and I think we'll appreciate the insights we gained this morning. Also of note, um, today, the 24th of April, is Pascha in the Orthodox, um, it's called the Orthodox Easter. And so in Canada, Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia, they are celebrating Easter today. And the Pascha is based on the um, on a Jillian calendar rather than the Gregorian calendar, which is why it's a week later than our typical one. Uh, the Canadian Council of Churches, in solidarity, with, in solidarity with Ukrainian bishops of Canada, has invited Christians from around the world to pray for peace in Ukraine on this day as a sign of celebration and hope. We join with them in prayer during our worship today, and together we continue to proclaim that Christ is risen, that love, love overcomes fear, and that life overcomes death and destruction. Um, with that, let us join together in our call to worship. Please stand. <coughs> Today is the first day of our week. The Lord, Lord help us to find peace and joy in this week. week. Open your hearts and receive God's breath of new life. Lord, Lord help us to be ready to hear your words of life. Come, let us worship the Lord with great joy. Praise be to God. Amen. six for the healing of the nations. It's four verses.
when we keep our faults and failures locked safely away, we have no need to confess. But God comes into our hearts when we least expect, so we can be filled with forgiveness, with hope, with peace. Please join me as we pray together our unison prayer of confession. God of empty tombs and empty people, when we hesitate to speak of your hope, forgive us and give us a voice. When we find it difficult to love one another, forgive us and give us fresh compassion. When we want to stand with the high and mighty, forgive us and seat us next to the poor and oppressed. When we stay locked behind our fears and doubts, forgive us and send us out to share your grace. When we cannot believe your word of new life, forgive us and fill us with your joy. Christ comes into every shallow corner of our lives with the light of Easter. Christ comes into the locked rooms of our faults and gives us with grace and hope. Christ comes to fill us with peace so that we may proclaim the good news. We are forgiven. Thanks, Thank Easter. You. Please join me in 584. to open our hearts and give of our time, our talents, and our treasures in gratitude for God's abundant love. Let us offer our gifts with generosity and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I had totally intended to uh, play something else today, but I could not find the music. So, um, plan B. I guess. Um, this is a piece John wrote called Dear Lord, It's You. It's actually a vocal piece, but I've asked Christina if she could read the words while I'm playing the melody. Um, some of you may have heard it before. It's one he wrote quite a long time ago. But this is Dear Lord, It's You. I'm saying this. 
so hopefully I'll be able to read it as a poem and not start singing along. <laughs> We could keep our treasures locked up where they never see the light of your love, or we can offer them back to you so that those who live in the shadows of poverty might be fed. Those who walk the streets of loneliness find a community, and those who long for peace will find an end to violence in their lives. And so we open our hearts in joyous praise to you. Amen. Lord, let me know my end, 
and what is the measure of my days? Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a few heart hand breaths, and my lifetime is nothing in your sight. Surely every word stands as a mere breath. Surely everyone goes about like a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. They heap up and do not know who will gather. And now, O oh Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am silent. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I am worn down by the blows of your hand. You chastise mortals in punishment for sin, consuming like a moth what is dear to them. Surely everyone is a mere breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not hold your peace at my tears, for I am your passing guest, an alien, like all my forebears. Turn your gaze away from me, that I may smile again before I depart and am no more. <coughs> The second reading is from the book of Hosea, chapter 14, beginning at verse 4. I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the forests of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive tree, and his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall they shall, give, they shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall flourish as a garden. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fragrant, fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. And the New Testament reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. These have been challenging days. I stay in touch with partners in both countries, in all four countries. Um, and it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, when uh, Marilyn asked me to, to preach. The text for this Sunday wasn't resonating. Um, and so I turned to the text about forgiveness. I remember my first Easter in Russia back in 2001. We were in the city of Ariol, about 250 miles southwest of Moscow. As we walked to church, I saw elderly, elderly members nearly running to get to the service. They were anxious to be able to greet their friends, their church family, with the words, Christos vas At the beginning, <clears throat> I was at the beginning of my studies in Russian, and so I had to quickly learn the response. Vaistinu vas The joy and the enthusiasm I witnessed that morning were beyond my experience. When the pastor called out, Christos vas the congregation stood, and their response was nearly thundering. Vaistinu vas Three times it was repeated, and again at different points throughout the service. Each time they stood and shouted the response. Over the coming weeks, that became the greeting whenever we met a fellow Christian, all the way up to Pentecost. It is Easter today in Russia, and Ukraine, and Belarus. I think of it with a different. I think it is with a different tone that they share this familiar greeting. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Just as the Lenten season began, Russia woke up to a nightmare. Ukraine woke up to a nightmare too. So did the rest of the world. Today it is Easter in Russia and Ukraine and the war continues. Under the shroud of missiles, fear and anger, 
under the shroud of silence and indifference, under the shroud of grief. It is hard to imagine that same joyous celebration of 2001. Things have become very black and white for many. For many Ukrainians and probably others in Europe and the United States, all Russians are guilty, either guilty of supporting the regime or guilty of silence. The brutal destruction is shocking. The number of refugees is staggering. Millions. And how will they find their way home again? Where is their space to contemplate forgiveness? I have heard I will never forgive more than once. When I see the harsh anger in Facebook posts, I understand the tears that grown men shed. I really only know Christians in both countries. The hurt people sling with biblical quotes do not fall on deaf ears. But I understand the anger. How could I not? Throughout these days, I have sought seeds of hope. I have found them in people like Yuri Lefonse, the director of Santa Gigio, which has worked tirelessly to feed the desperate, those that can't leave. They have welcomed those fleeing their homes and helped them find their ways to the borders. They have found ways to evacuate orphanages and nursing homes and to get supplies to occupied areas. I find hope in the Ukrainian Reformed Church in Transcarpathia, the westernmost region of Ukraine, and the safest. Taking so many people into homes and shelters and helping those that would to cross into Hungary. I have found hope in the way that Poland, Slovakia, Czechia, Hungary, Romania, and Moldova have received so many thousands. Poland has received millions. No one was prepared, and most had no experience. <coughs> Visiting Czechia and Poland in the beginning of April, I sat around the table with Church <coughs> Diakonia that is learning to re the reality of refugee crisis, having received some of those millions. They came as strangers, but the church members have welcomed them as individuals with names and history. It's women and children, confused and traumatized. The church is learning how to meet their needs and maybe help to begin the process of healing. They are learning something about themselves as well. This won't be fast. Many want to go home again, but how can they? The war continues, and for many, their homes have already been destroyed. These have been heartbreaking days. There are people that I know and love in both countries. I have watched the suffering. I have watched bitterness and anger, the anger of Ukrainians against Russian, Russians, and the anger of Russians against their own. There are courageous voices. There are people demonstrating. People are trying to inform those that support the regime, denying what is being reported from the West. Many people are being arrested and quickly convicted, too often sentenced to 10 to 15 years in prison. Again and again, I have wondered how they will ever forgive. While I was in Poland, the tragedy of Bucha was discovered. I was part of a conversation about the need for a new theology theology after Bucha, not unlike the need for a new theology after Auschwitz. The fact that they are asking this question is a sign of hope. They know that it is Jesus' call and the height of love to forgive. And how do we live without love? The challenges of forgiveness are not limited to the catastrophic times. How many little events in life, fences and intended or unintended, have caused flashes of anger that is hard to let go of. How often have we wanted to say, I can never forgive you, or held on to hurt for years until another sight draws it out of us as we lash back at the offender. Do you remember? We do remember. How many differences of opinion seem impossible to get beyond? My home brother and I are on opposite ends of the spectrum on any number of topics. It is sometimes amazes me that we have the same parents. <laughs> we have so often found room for misunderstanding one another that the only thing we have left that we can still safely talk about is our children. How do we make peace? How do we forgive the wounds of our words? The people we love most have the greatest capacity to hurt, to hurt us. Having recognized the gulf between us, he and I are now trying. Sometimes the little things are harder to forgive than the big ones. Sometimes we forget that it matters. 
Jesus talks about forgiveness a lot. How many times must I forgive my neighbor, my brother, my friend? Not seven, but 77. Does this mean that we can keep track? And when we get to 77, we don't have to forgive anymore. I think I would lose track somewhere. I hope. I hope I would lose track somewhere along the way. I think that this is, I think it misses the point. The refusal for to, give is, to forgive is a judgment. And we're not supposed to do that either. The unforgiving heart hurts us. We're talking about the people close to us. So there's not a lot of space for healing of the wounds. It keeps coming back to us. When I read the words of Hosea, I know that I want to live under forgiveness. I want to forgive and be forgiven. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the forest of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive trees, and his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall flourish as a garden. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. I want this peace, the fruit of love for, for each of us. <clears throat> what helps? How do we find this peace? How do we break down the barriers we build when we are hurt? My brother and I had, had to get past what we thought the other meant. It turns out we didn't understand what caused the rifts to begin with. It wasn't about our different, different points of view at all. Taking the time to talk again began our journey. What we thought the other meant wasn't it at all. I have a special friend in Ukraine, Alla. She is a psychologist who works with youth and families, including orphans and foster parents, internally displaced people from the eight-year war in Donbass, helping teachers to address trauma in the students in that war zone. She has worked on issues of peace and reconciliation. She and I tried to organize a camp back in 2019. Isn't that a long time ago? A camp for Ukrainian and Russian youth, just so they could get to know one another and discover humanity rather than enemies. Unfortunately, COVID came and made that impossible. Allah spoke recently at an online event for Presbyterian youth. The youth sent questions in advance. One teenager asked what she could pray for in addition to her prayers for peace. Allah responded, pray that our hearts might remain soft. Malleable. Gentle. The anger, the bitterness, the fear have the potential to turn our hearts to stone, not just in times of war. She, like me, has watched the angry rhetoric emerging in Ukraine and wants to find hope for the future. Hope that includes gentleness of spirit, empathy, compassion. Keeping our hearts soft is a risk. My heart has been broken again and again nearly every day in the past two months. But the capacity of my heart to keep breaking is itself a sign of hope. Jesus said, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The heart of stone is beyond comfort. It requires a conscious effort to keep the heart soft, and it's painful. Jesus also said, blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemaker, peacemaking requires hearts that can hear, hearts that can feel, Hearts that can love. Not seven, but 77. Peter thought he was being generous with seven. May we lose track of the hurts and offenses. May we keep our hearts soft with the love of Christ. Join me in Ham 792, There is a Balm in Gilead.
себе. This morning we join in solidarity with Ukrainian bishops of Canada to proclaim together that Christ is risen, that love overcomes fear, and that life overcomes death and destruction. We pray for peace. We pray for softened hearts. We ask for comfort and healing for all those who are struggling from despair in body, mind, or spirit. Bring peace to those who grieve the losses in their lives. Bring to all of your beloved children the hope and assurance that you are present, Lord, in all times and all places. We pray today for the prayers lifted up this morning. We give thanks for the beautiful brunch and flowers that were that graced us on our Easter. We pray for Jessica's sister-in-law Deb as she heals. We pray, we continue prayers for the Matheson family. This following prayer was provided for today's Peace for Ukraine observance. It was written by the Reverend Dr. Das Sidney, President of the Canadian Council of Churches. O oh God of love, we pray for the people of Ukraine, the frail and the elderly, the women and the children who are left alone, grieving families with loved ones who have fallen and the multitudes who have lost everything. O oh God of peace, we now, we, how we long that violence will cease, that the machines of war will be transformed into implements of peace. Be with the leaders of this world that their decisions will be keenly oriented towards a just and lasting peace. O oh God of compassion, open our hearts to care for the refugees who may come to our shores and the needy stranger in our midst. For Christ's sake, amen. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. And now, God of all, Holy One, hear us as we pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join me in our final hymn, number 445, God, How Can We Forgive?
And now, go out into the world in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our worship service is over. Our service is over. <laughs>